I just recorded the entire video and I didn't even press record. The universe really does not want me to post a video. God. So if you do not know, PAX West happened last week, which if you don't know what PAX West is or a PAX convention is, it's a video game convention where developers come together, fans, developers and fans alike come together at a convention and said developers and publishers talk about their newest upcoming games. Deck Nine was at this event and they had a panel dedicated to the new Life is Strange game, Life is Strange Double Exposure. Unfortunately, I wasn't there. I live in the UK, hence the dark and dingy lighting. This occurred in the States, so unfortunately I wasn't able to attend, but I read a lot about it on social media and I did watch the panel because it was live as well. The panel was hosted by Jonathan Stauder and Felice Khan. I don't know if I said their names correctly, I really hope I did, but they are two narrative directors of the game. And they also did the reveal live stream a couple months ago when the game was announced. Deck Nine did, an, did a reveal live stream where they showed more gameplay around a week after Life is Strange Job Exposure trailer dropped. And Jonathan and Felice were the two narrative directors there as well, answering questions and doing the Q&A. So today I just thought I would make this video to talk about the new details that were released and the gameplay we were shown and just let you know my thoughts on this entire thing. I'm not going to cover absolutely every single thing in this video because I don't want it to be too long but I'm just going to cover what I think are the most important points. I might make a second video discussing the other things. Before I start this video I just want to apologise that I've not really been active on YouTube for the last two to three weeks. Life has just been really busy and it's just exhausted me so I've been kind of taking a little bit of a break from filming, editing and making videos and streaming as well. But whilst I've been away from YouTube I've not been totally away from social media. If you don't know I do have a Twitter account which I'm mostly active on or sorry not Twitter, X. It's always gonna be Twitter to me. I'm always gonna call it Twitter, so sorry. It's not X to me, it's Twitter. But I post quite a lot on there. I repost a lot of stuff about Life is Strange, and I tend to interact with the community on there. The community at the moment is absolutely booming, as you can imagine, due to the Life is Strange stuff happening at the moment. So I recommend you follow me on there. But the main social media that I am active on is my Instagram account, which I really recommend you follow me on there. I post a lot of content about the new games I'm playing at the moment, about nerdy purchases. I post about my cats, exclusive Sparks, cat content and I also do Q&A's on there quite a lot on my Instagram stories as well just a really fun way for me to connect and interact with you guys so if you're interested in following me on there I really recommend it my links to those social medias are down in the description I'm a lot more active on those so yeah follow and join in. Without further ado, let's continue on with the video. Now the first thing I want to talk about is Max's power. This was touched on quite a lot in the panel. As we know throughout the whole entire marketing of the new Life is Strange is that Max has a new power and that new power has been promoted as an alternative reality power where Max can shift between two timelines to try and solve the murder of her best friend Safi. We may have a conversation prompt in one timeline but not a conversation prompt in the other timeline which is why it's important to shift between these two timelines to try and get as much information about this mystery and to aid this investigation as much as possible. Now there was a clip in the panel which had a lot of people questioning things and here is the clip in question. Can we see? Let's what find out. Hell? Shit. Did it right, Just? That's a good question. Was this the rewind power? So if you've watched a reveal live stream that happened a couple months ago, Jonathan did say that Max wasn't able to use her rewind power anymore due to trauma as the interviewer asked this question. And this would make a lot of sense because in the first Life is Strange game, Max does go through an awful lot of trauma related to her power. I mean, she watches people die, especially Chloe, multiple times. She witnesses some very tragic events by changing timelines and to change the outcomes of certain things such as William's death. So rather William getting in the accident, it's Chloe and she sees other people die multiple times and to see what that 
that other horrific possibility is, is really traumatizing, especially for an 18 year old. And going into alternative realities and timelines is slightly touched upon in the first Life is Strange game. But Max goes through an awful lot due to her rewind power, especially with the dark room, even though that technically did not happen in that timeline or in the timeline that Max is in now, doesn't mean that she didn't experience it. She still went through what happened in the dark room. And again, that is really traumatizing for any person. So I think she's well within her right to be traumatized by that, to have PTSD and not want to use that rewind power anymore because that rewind power cost her an awful lot, whether it cost her her best friend or cost an entire town. Both possibilities are super traumatizing, so that's valid. But in this clip, it is hinted that Max does use her rewind power just for a second and I don't think it was intentional due to her reaction. It appears that she is in a place she's not supposed to be and Detective Alderman spots her and just as probably a panic reflex, she used the rewind power without realizing. I think it's going to be a case of that she hasn't lost the ability to use her rewind power, but she's lost the ability to be able to control it. And it might be a case of she can't control when she rewinds. And I think this will play later on into the game. And whether these two powers contrast together or not, I'm not too sure about yet. So I think it'll be really interesting to see how they delve into this and how they will contrast these two powers together if this is a possibility. If Max rewinds, rewinds, at all in this game, I don't know. Yeah, I'm not too sure if they go together, the rewind and the shifting, but I guess we'll just have to wait and see until October, which is literally next month. God, this year is going so fast. The next thing I wanna talk about is returning characters, and we have had some confirmed returning characters, and this is through the Crosstalk platform introduced, which looks like a social media platform that the characters in Double Exposure use. And this isn't the first time that we've had a feature like this. If you've not played True Colors, True Colors does actually have a platform very similar called MyBlock, which just provides more context behind the characters. It is literally just a social media, almost like a Facebook, Twitter for these characters, just to post about things so you can learn more about what they're up to, what they think of certain things and what they're doing. And Joyce is actually on this Crosstalk platform. And this is obviously in the context that Max sacrificed Chloe because if Max sacrifices Chloe, Joyce and Arcadia Bay will obviously all still be alive. And there's a very gut-wrenching post that follows as Joyce saying, it's been years since my Chloe passed, but every Christmas I will laugh when I remember her poking holes in her presence for a sneak peek. And another one that says, ever since I retired, living alone has been lonely, so I dot 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 but it cuts off. It's really heartwarming to see that even after all these years Max did stay in touch with Joyce and it is implied at the end of Sacrifice Chloe ending in Life is Strange 1 that Max and Joyce connect over this and almost share their grief of Chloe's passing. So they've clearly stayed in touch even though Max is all the way over in Vermont and Joyce is all the way over in Oregon if she is still residing in Oregon that is. The next character that has appeared on this crosstalk platform is Victoria Chase. Victoria was the mean girl-esque person in Life is Strange 1 and Before the Storm. She was kind of a love to hate, hate to love character that people had very mixed opinions on. I personally liked Victoria. I don't think she was a bad person. I think it was just mostly jealousy towards Max. She knew Max was a talented photographer and Victoria wanted to be the best. And again, she wasn't a bad person. She was literally just like 15, 16, 17, 18. She's just jealous teenager. So I don't think that makes her a bad person. It's implied on this crosstalk platform that Victoria went on to be a photographer, hence the V Chase photography handle. So it's really good to see that she went off to also do something that she was passionate about. It makes me wonder more, like did Victoria and Max work together at any point during these 10 years? They're both photographers. So it's a possibility for sure. If Max and Victoria do interact, I think it's gonna be really interesting to see how they do interact due to their very slightly complicated relationship in the first Life is Strange, as I mentioned earlier. So it's going to be good to see a mature Victoria and a mature Max talking, interacting. Now I want to talk about some possible returning characters. Obviously this is determined on some of the choices you made in the first Life is Strange game, so let's go over them. The first one I want to talk about is Warren Graham, who is a potential love interest in the first Life is Strange game. I personally really liked Warren. I know a lot of the community choose to hate him because Chloe, to me and to loads of others, is the obvious choice in romance for Max but I think Warren is really sweet and if you compare him to Elliot who is an 
absolute creep. Warren is a sweetheart and yes he does some weird and creepy things. That's because he's literally a teenage boy and teenage boys do weird and creepy things. It'd be really interesting to see Max and Warren interact and him potentially be on this crosstalk platform. Of course if you choose to sacrifice Arcadia Bay Warren does sadly die in this timeline so if you chose that and make that apparent to double exposure then there's no chance of Warren being or having being referred to in Life is Strange Double Exposure. The next character I want to talk about is Kate Marsh. Now I'm pretty sure, I'm not 100% certain so you guys are gonna have to correct me on this, but I'm pretty sure Kate does survive the storm because at the time the storm happens Kate is not in town anymore. I think she's either gone back to her parents so she survives the storm. This is also determined on whether you manage to talk Kate out of suicide at the end of episode 2. So how the game are going to navigate that and how the developers have navigated this is a whole other story but hopefully it is handled properly if Kate Marsh is going to make an appearance or there's going to be a reference to her in the new Life is Strange game is just determined on your choices. The Prescotts, of course they're dead in the Sacrifice Arcadia Bay ending but in the save Arcadia Bay ending. Nathan gets arrested but he's not dead so I wonder what happens with Nathan, him obviously being charged for killing Chloe, what that does to the Prescott name. It'd be really interesting to see how that all played out. Another character that has been mentioned a lot is Mr. Jefferson. Now it has been confirmed through ratings of the game that there are going to be flashback scenes to the Dark Room and what happened to Max in the Dark Room and other characters as well. This is another character's fate that is determined on choices you made. Mr. Jefferson is killed by David in the Dark Room. If you tell David that he killed Chloe, then he shoots Mr. Jefferson, but if you don't tell David, then he knocks Jefferson out, I believe, or he arrests him, but he does not kill him. But if you choose to sacrifice Chloe, Mr. Jefferson does get arrested, so there is a potential that he can be alive if you sacrificed Arcadia Bay, because of course he is also in the bunker at the time of the storm happening. Whether he still gets arrested or not is completely unclear, because David also survives the storm as well in both endings, because he's in the bunker, so whether he did something to Mr. Jefferson or not, we don't know. That was wasn't really cleared up. So hopefully Double Exposure clears this up. Again, another really difficult storyline to tackle because there is obviously that small choice you make about whether you tell David if Chloe is alive or not at that point in the game in which he chooses to shoot Jefferson or not. Yeah, I don't know how they're gonna go about that one either, but there is potential that Jefferson could still be alive in this timeline. I'm talking about the Sacrifice Arcadia Bay timeline, by the way, if I didn't make that clear, but obviously in the Sacrifice Chloe timeline, Mr. Jefferson is still alive, but he gets arrested and is imprisoned for what he did, rightfully so. Another pair of characters I want to bring up and which I thought was worth bringing up is Sean and Daniel, who are the protagonists in Life is Strange 2. Now this was a question asked at the panel in which Jonathan and Felice confirmed that all of the Life is Strange games take place in the same universe and that is canon. And he specifically mentions, quote, I mean Life is Strange is part of the same universe and it's part of the same canon. So depending on the choice that you input in your early scenes with Safi that takes into account Life is Strange 2. Now at the time Life is Strange double exposure is taking place, Sean and Daniel's story has already happened and it happened in Seattle so I'm pretty sure it was a big story at the time so maybe what happened with them boys is referenced and that whole mystery because at the time it was a mystery to the authorities about Sean and Daniel and what they did and why they wanted to be taken in for questioning and them being on the run so that entire case and situation is probably brought up in Life is Strange Double Exposure which leads me on to my next pair of characters Steph and Alex. Steph is in Life is Strange Before the Storm and her and Chloe do me and and Steph is a pretty big part of the Before the Storm story as well and she plays a huge part in True Colours so it is also worth mentioning their involvement in Double Exposure whether they'll be mentioned whether there'll be a reference to them too I mean again Steph does survive the storm because she isn't in Arcadia Bay at the time of the storm happening and that is detailed in the Wavelengths DLC if you chose to sacrifice Arcadia Bay she isn't there but if you choose to sacrifice Chloe obviously this brings up a whole other thing and whether Steph and Alex are gonna be even like alive like I don't know like it is just a big wormhole like we don't know talking in terms of you sacrificing Arcadia Bay I think there'll be a small chance that Steph and Alex will be mentioned uh, because of everything that happened in Haven Springs 
with Gabe's death and Typhon being involved. I'm certain that's a pretty big story, so that is definitely going to be mentioned, I reckon. The events of True Colours and with what happened with Alex and maybe even Steph. So it's worth mentioning. And plus, Chloe and Steph know each other, so if Chloe is alive in this timeline, maybe maybe Steph. I don't I don't know. Just I'm just speculating. Last but certainly not least is Chloe Price. Now this is the character that has been demanded for the most throughout the whole marketing of Life is Strange Double Exposure, rightfully so. Of course, people who chose to sacrifice Chloe, it's an easy choice. Chloe's dead, so she's obviously not going to be in this timeline, but if you chose to sacrifice Arcadia Bay, Chloe is still alive. Jonathan Strouder was asked about this, and he said this. Is Chloe alive? Tell me. I think that uh, entirely depends on the choice you make at the start of the game. Uh, if Chloe was alive when you finished the first game, uh, she should be alive at the start of this one. If you sacrificed her, then she's not around. Uh, and that is all I'm allowed to say about Chloe for everybody. So just as a reminder, he just said, basically, if you're asking about Chloe, you're not going to get an answer other than that. Now, this confirms to me that Deck Nine and the Life is Strange team and everyone involved are under an NDA by Square Enix to not discuss Chloe. It's very obvious. Whether it's because she has an involvement in the game or not, and they're worried about this affecting sales, is a whole other theory. And it's having fans very worried about why they're not going to discuss Chloe. I personally don't think Chloe's going to play a big role in the game if she's still alive, because this isn't her story. This is Max and Safi's story and predominantly Max's story really, but about Safi too. I think the least we'll probably get is maybe like a 10, 15 minute cameo. I don't know at what point in the game, but maybe a 10, 15 minute cameo. She'll appear on the crosstalk platform, texts, phone calls, video calls, things like that. I think we'll mostly see her there. Maybe her actually physically appearing at the end of the game. Neither voice actors for Chloe, Rihanna DeVries or Ashley Birch have said anything about their involvement in the Life is Strange game. All other Life is Strange voice actors, of course, are staying tight-lipped. They're under an NDA, so there's no point asking any of them because it is a career-destroying move for them to talk about something they shouldn't under an NDA. So, of course, I think people should stop asking these voice actors about their involvement in the game because they're obviously not going to say because it could literally destroy their careers. But I would be happy for either Rihanna or Ashley to reprise their roles. I think they both did an amazing job voicing Chloe and it'd be it'd make me really happy for Chloe to make a physical appearance in the game and for her to actually be there, be voiced, be really cool. But we obviously don't know at the moment. I think she's going to be referenced to and I don't think her and Max split up. Even though I said a few videos ago I thought they would, my opinion has changed. I think they're still together, just doing different things at the moment. And that sometimes happens in relationships, doesn't necessarily mean that they've split up. Um, just Chloe's probably doing her thing and Max is doing her thing for a little while. So hopefully that's the case, but we don't know for certain. There's a few additional details I want to mention as well about Double Exposure. It has been confirmed that it's going to be five chapters long, thank God. I feel like the main problem with True Colours, which was the last Life is Strange game, is that it was just far too short. So hopefully this game is a little bit longer than True Colours was. The names of the chapters have also been revealed and they are chapter one's called Still Life, Penumbra, and there's also three sub-chapters as well, which the previous Life is Strange games also have sub-chapters and those are Table for Free, By the Horns, Leaving Nothing Overlooked, Avoiding Detection, and then chapter three, Spin, episode four, Diptych, and episode five, Decoherence. So these are all, I think Penembra, Diptych, and Decoherence are all photography terms. I am going to make a separate video diving into these chapter names and what they could possibly mean. I don't want to go into it into this video because it'd just be far too long, but keep an eye out for that video. But yeah, that is, um, that, des that definitely leaves things open for discussion, for sure. That's basically all I've got to say in this video. Thank you so much for watching. Again, I just want to apologize that I have been sort of quiet on here. Again, I've just been really busy in life and it exhausted me, uh, but it's good to be back, good to be filming videos. 
do keep an eye out on my YouTube channel because I am going to be streaming, continuing streaming the first Life is Strange game. We're currently on the end of episode two. We finished episode two, uh, I think last month was the last time I streamed. Um, and episode three is actually my favorite episode in the first Life is Strange game. I do plan to stream that very soon. So please do keep your eyes peeled for that. I will let you guys know on social media when I plan to go live for that so you don't miss it. If you do miss it and have missed the others, all of them are on my channel available to view um, just under the live tab on my channel so if you did miss any of me streaming the Life is Strange games they are there for you to view. If you enjoyed this video do consider leaving a like and subscribe for more Life is Strange content. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Goodbye and take care.